Why does a bike pump get hot when you use it? Well, it's all to do with gas pressure, which is our topic to look at today. So to understand gas pressure, let's recap how gas particles move. Now, as I'm showing with the arrows here, they're moving in all directions randomly, and they also move at a range of speeds. So it's called constant random motion. Random meaning they could go anywhere at any time, and they'll have a range of speeds. They don't all move quickly. They can slow down if they collide with each other. Okay, so this is what the particles in the bike tire are doing. Now, to be able to cause pressure, a bike particle in a bike tire or anywhere needs to hit the container wall. So let's look at a perfect kind of three mark answer for what causes pressure in a gas. So for the pressure to be caused, what we need is a particle to collide with um, the wall of the gas. Now, it does collide with particles in the gas as well, but it's particles colliding with the wall of the container that causes pressure. So particles collide with the wall of the container. Um, now the next thing is what happens when they collide with the wall of the container. When they collide with the wall or the tire, they exert a force. So particles exert a force on the wall of the container. Now this force is pretty small, but when you build it up for millions of particles over a period of time, many particles will mean or will exert a large force on the container. Now we explain why there's a force, how does force link to pressure? So the idea is there's an equation to calculate pressure, um, which is on paper two as well, um, and it's worth knowing the definition because the definition of pressure is basically that equation. So when we talk about pressure, what we mean pressure is a force per unit area. So just a force acting on a unit area of a tire or a room, anything at all really. Let's look at what affects pressure then. So pressure is directly proportional to temperature. So what that means, if I was to draw a graph of temperature and pressure, it would look up, uh, look like this. So directly proportional, straight line through the origin, through the zero point of the graph. Now, why is this the case? Why does temperature affect pressure? So let's think about the particles. So an increase in temperature means that particles have a greater kinetic energy. Now you can say speed here, that's fine, but kinetic energy is normally the first thing on a mark scheme. So particles have a greater kinetic energy. When they have a greater kinetic energy, so that means they'll have a greater force when they collide with the wall. So a greater force is exerted um, on when they collide with the wall. Next then, let's lead that to um, pressure. Um, there's also, as well as having a greater force, there are more collisions per second. So if they're moving faster, they're gonna be able to go from one side of the tire to the other more quickly. You can't just say there's more collisions here. You've gotta say there's more collisions per second. That's what gets the mark for this point. Now, the next part of the video is for separate science only. So you can stop watching if you do combined science, you do not need to know this. So the bit the separate science students need to know is what happens to um, pressure when volume increases or decreases. So if the volume of the container goes down, the pressure actually goes up. Now, the relationship we say is what's called inversely proportional. So volume is inversely proportional to pressure. So it looks like that little proportional symbol and one over V. Now, the reason for this is as follows. When volume decreases, essentially, there's less room for the particles to be in. They're still moving around randomly, but there's less room for them, there's less space than there was before. So what that means is that there's a greater number of collisions per second. Because there's less room for them, they're going to hit the wall more often, but not just more often, it's more often per second. So you can either say it's a greater number of collisions per second, or you can say the collisions are more frequent. Well, that would be fine for the mark, but collisions per second is better. So with more collisions, that means there's a greater overall force. Now we've covered previously, sorry for my spelling of force there, greater force means that there's a greater pressure, because pressure is force per unit area. Now the graph for something that's inversely proportional is a downwards curve, not a straight line, downwards curve like this. And what you'll notice if you look up all the points of pressure and volume at different points on your graph, is that when you multiply the pressure times the volume together, it is constant, constant meaning the same. So for example, if you multiply it together once to be 100, any other point in that line will mean it's also 100. Now this is a property of any two variables that are inversely proportional. If you multiply the x and the y variable or axis together, it will be constant. 
Now what it means is for questions, we can use the initial pressure times volume and it will always equal the final pressure times volume. Let's have a look at this question here. So a gas has an initial pressure of five pascals at a volume of 100. And then what is the new pressure if the volume halves to 50? So let's put our numbers in. So five times 100 is something times 50. We're trying to find the final pressure, P2. So let's times the numbers together to make my maths easier. We've got 500 divided by 50 gives us a value of 10 pascals. So what this tells us then, and the questions can be harder than that, but I've used easy maths to draw out one last thing about two things that are inversely proportional, is that inversely proportional as one variable halves, the other doubles. So here, when the volume halves, the pressure doubles.